Hello, Hello everyone. everyone. I'm David. I'm Ems. And welcome to Top Five Scary Stories. All right. So, hope you enjoyed our previous top ten. Now we're gonna go with five, and hope you enjoyed. Number five. Crashed car. Late one night, a married couple were driving home from a party. They lived in a small village outside the city, and their journey took them down a winding mountain road that passed through a dense forest. It was raining heavily and the husband was trying slowly to negotiate the sharp turns in the road. As they come around the bend, they were shocked to see a car that was stuck in the ditch by the side of the road. It looked as it had skid off the road and crashed into a big tree. They drove past the crashed car and pulled over the side of the road to see if they could help. The husband got out and dashed back to the scene of the accident. The front end of the car was crushed and the windscreen cracked. Brushing the rain of the side window, he could see that there were people inside. There were two passengers in the front seat, a man and a woman. They were covered in blood and their heads were hanging limbs of their shoulders. Looking closer, he was horrified when he realized that both of them had almost been Disappicated. Their heads were hanging on by a few threads. There was nothing he could do for them. They were obviously dead. Staring from the back window, he spotted a young girl curled up in the back seat. Out front, she was slumped over at an awkward angle. She did not seem to be badly injured. Her seatbelt hits probably protected her from the full force of the crash, taking hold of her handle. He used all his might to wrench open the back door. The girl appeared to be around 7 or 8 years old. Her face was deadly pale and the, there was some blood on her face. He reached in and felt for her pulse. Suddenly the little girl's eyes flicked open. She was still alive. The man breathed a sign of relief. Are you alright? asked the man gently. The girl didn't reply. She seems to be still dazed from the impact. Thinking quickly, the man scooped her up in his arms and ran back to his car, clutching her tightly. The parents are dead, he told his wife. This girl looks okay, but I can't be sure. We got to get her to the hospital as fast as possible, said his wife. She could have internal injuries. They placed the girl on the back seat of their car and wrapped her in a blanket to keep her warm. Then, the couple drove off as quickly as possible in search of nearest hospital. The atmosphere in the car was intense. They were driving at full speed down the wind mountain road. The husband kept his eyes glued to the road. He had to concentrate on the bends and curves. It was still raining hard and the road was slippery. He wanted to make sure they didn't have an accident. The wife examined a map of the area. She was trying to figure out the fastest route to the hospital. The couple in the car were horribly injured, said the husband. Their heads were hanging off. His wife didn't reply. It was the worst accident I ever seen, he said. She still didn't reply. He turned to look at his wife. Her eyes were burling out, staring into space. Her mouth was wide open in a silent scream. His, her throat was slit from ear to ear, blood and pouring down the front of her dress. Suddenly, he glazed in the rear view mirror and saw the little girl licking a bloody knife. Number 4. Help me. One cold and dark December night, a teenage girl named Katie was babysitting two children. There was a 7-year-old boy named Taylor and a 6-year-old girl named Selena. Parents had gone to the movies for the night, leaving Katie in. Just after 9 o'clock that, that night, the phone rang. Katie answered it and heard an anguished voice screaming, help me, for heaven's sake, help me. Confused, Katie hung up the phone and decided that it must have just been a prank call. Thirty minutes later, the phone rang again and the same voice screamed, help me, somebody please help me. This time, Katie was beginning to get frightened. The, the children asked her who was calling and she told them not to worry, that everything was just fine. 
Another 30 minutes passed by and she received another call. The voice on the other side sounded scared and desperate. Help me, for heaven's sake, won't somebody help me? The font went dead. Seconds later, they knocked at the door. The babysitter clutched the children tightly to her. She was almost as scared as they were. The urgent knocking continued. She knew it wasn't the children's parents because they weren't due home for at least an hour. They could hear a voice coming from outside. It was a man's voice and he was repairing over and over. Help me, help me, help me. She didn't know what to do. I'll help to let him in, she said. He needs help. Later that night, when the parents arrived at home, the house was early silent. All of the lights were, were off. When they searched the house, they entered the living room and stumbled upon a horrible scene. Katie and both of the children has been murdered. Their arms and legs has been chopped off. On the wall written in blood were the words, For heaven's sake, help me before I kill again. I cannot control myself anymore. Number 3. Twin Girls there was a married couple who lived in a rural area of Spain. Their house was a modest little cottage, located at the edge of the busy main road. They had two daughters who were both twin girls. As they grew up, the twins girls were very well behaved. They, were, they never fought or argued. They lived happily together and hated to be separated. One day, the mother had to go to the shop and buy some milk and bread. She didn't want to leave the girls on their own, so she bought them with her. Grasping both girls by the hand, the mother led them across the busy road. Unfortunately, the mother had forgotten to look both ways before she crossed the street. Just as they nearest to the other side, she heard a loud speech and then a horrible crunching sound as her daughter's tiny hands were torn out of her grasp. When the mother twirled around to look, she screamed in horror at what she saw and collapsed on the sidewalk. The twin girls had been run over by a huge truck. The blood body remains of the twin girls were splattered across the road. The mother began crying and sobbing hysterically. Try as she might, she could tear her eyes away from the two big streaks of red that stained the road. At the funeral, the father tried to comfort his wife, but she was inconsolable. Over and over she screamed, this is all my fault, this is all my fault. Four years later, the mother and father still lived in the same house beside the road where their daughters had perished. The woman became pregnant again. The couple were so surprised when the doctors told them that they will be having twins again. The parents rejoiced when their little two girls were born. This happy event caused the mother to forget the tragedy of the past. As the twin girls grew up, their mother and father were carefully never to mention the previous children. They acted as if the seated girls had never existed. One day, the two little twin girls were playing in the garden. Their mother came out and told them to come with her to the shop. As they stood at the edge of the road, the mother took hold of the hands of the two girls and held them tightly. Suddenly. As the mother began walking across the road, the girls began to struggle and tried to slip out of the mother's grasp. No, mommy, don't hold us, cried the twin girls in unison. We don't want to die again. Number two, tell me the way. One dark night, a 15 years old girl named Lydia was walking home from her friend's house. She turned down a narrow street to take a shortcut and was straddled by the sight of an old man standing in her path. When she stopped, the old man turned to her and in a hoarse voice said, Tell me the way. His face was disgusting, his skin covered in scars and boils, his hair strings and unkempt, his eyes burning horribly, almost popping out of the sockets. Lydia was terrified. She was alone in a dark and narrow alleyway with a strange and disturbing person, her heart being pounding and it, it took her a few seconds to catch her breath. Tell me the way, the old man demanded. Okay, okay, uh, where are you going? asked Lydia nervously. When the old man told her the address, she was, he was searching for a chill ran down his, her spine. It was her house. I don't know where the that is, she replied curtly as she pushed past the old man and ran down the alleyway. 
Glancing back, she could see him standing in the alley, watching her flee. Lydia was so freaked out by the incident that she didn't stop running until she got back to the, her house. Breathing a sigh of relief, she took out her keys. She looked up and down the street to make sure the old man hadn't followed her. It was empty. She turned the key, unlocked the door and pushed it open. From the dark darkness inside the house, a hoarse voice said, tell me the way. Number one, family portraits. A long time ago, there was a man who went out hunting in the woods. As night fell, he found himself in a familiar part of the forest. He walked and walked, but he could not find his way home. Wandering aimlessly in the dark, he eventually came to a small clearing where an old ramshackle cabin stood. Tired and weary, he decided to see if he could stay there for the night. When he came closer to the cabin, he saw the door was standing ajar. Poking his head inside, he could see that the little cabin was completely empty but the way was a bed and fire burning in the fireplace. The hunter threw himself on the bed and decided to sleep there for the night. If the owner came back, he would ask his permission in the morning. Lying on the bed half asleep, he looked around and was surprised to see the wall were covered with paintings. They appeared to be family portraits, all framed and painted in incredible detail. They were seem very like, lifelike, and without exception, each family portrait was uglier than the next. The hideous faces in the painting made him incredibly uneasy. The way they were painted made it seem as if the eyes were standing, staring directly at him. It was incredibly unnerving. He decided that the only way he was going to get sleep was to ignore the hideous faces staring at him. So he turned on the side, facing the wall, pulled the blanket over his head and drifted off to sleep. In the morning, the hunter woke up to find the cabin batched in sunlight. When he looked up, he discovers there were no family porters on the wall of the cabin, only windows. Well, thank you everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed this top 10 video. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, comment, comment below, below and, and thank, thank you for subscribing. subscribing. And thank you for all the support you do. Be sure to comment below if you want more top 10 or more top 5 videos. And give us some example of what you want. So yeah, we'll see you in the next episode. Bye bye. bye.